Hi guys, this is Karthik Arula and in this video, I'll be discussing uh, the pro third problem of the Elite Code July challenge that is prison cells after n days. So the problem statement says that we are given eight prison cells. So cell number one, two, three and so on till cell number eight. Something like this. Okay. And what we are given is that some of these cells are empty while others are occupied with prisoners or something. So a zero would mean that a particular cell is empty. So if I had a zero here, this would mean that cell number four is empty. Whereas a one at some cell position will mean that that particular cell is occupied. So having a one here would mean that cell number one is occupied. So we are given a configuration initially at day zero. And initially at day zero, some of these cells are empty while others are occupied. So you're given an array of ones and zeros of the size eight. Okay. Now the rule is, uh, what we would like to do is we would like to find what is the configuration of these present cells at nth day. Okay. So day one, day two, day three, so on till the nth day. Now the rule here is that to generate what is the configuration at day i given the configuration of day i minus one. Let's discuss that rule. So the rule here is that if a cell has two adjacent neighbors that are both occupied or both vacant, then the cell becomes occupied. So assume that at day i minus one, uh, assume that at day i minus one, you are thinking about this particular cell and the neighbors of this uh, cell, this one and this one, if both of these are either occupied or both of these basically the zero would mean empty. So if both of these are either empty, or if both of these are either occupied, if any of these is true, then at day i, this same cell will become occupied. Okay. And otherwise, uh, if the configuration was that uh, at day i minus one, the neighboring cells both were not empty or both were not uh, uh, occupied, then this will uh, become empty at day number i. So that is the rule. You can read it here if it's not clear to you and I'll be discussing the sample now. What we want to do is we want to find what is the configuration at day number n. So consider this example. This is a really nice example given here. We want to find what is the configuration at day number seven. Configuration of the present cells at day number seven. We are given with initial configuration at day zero to be zero one zero one one zero zero one. Now consider what happens to the first cell at day one. You will look at the two neighboring cells for this guy. There is just one neighboring cell and that is occupied. So in fact, this particular cell does not have two neighbors, right? So since this has not, uh, this does not have two neighbors, so it will stay empty on the next day. So this one should be fine. Now consider this cell. The two neighbors of the cell both are empty. So at day one, it becomes occupied. For this cell, both the adjacent neighbors are occupied. So this will also become occupied since both the neighboring cells have the same state. So it becomes occupied. And let's consider this guy. So one of the neighboring cells here is occupied while the other neighboring cell here is empty. Since both are not empty and uh, basically we want either both neighboring to be occupied or both neighboring to be empty. But since none of this is true for this cell, therefore it becomes vacant on the next day. Now let's consider this last cell since it has only one neighboring cell. So it is going to become empty on the next day, right? So uh, I guess this is uh, a good enough explanation here. We can easily go from day zero to day one. Then similar using similar rules, we can go from day one to day two and so on till day seven. Once we have reached day seven, we can simply print the configuration or return the configuration as required by the question. Yeah. So we are returning the configuration of day seven. Mm. All right. So with this thing, we can definitely come up with a easy brute force solution in which we can simply use the rule and generate the next day's configuration till we reach the nth day. And that is the simplest solution anyone can think of, right? And that will have the complexity big O of n in which you take 
the ith days configuration and generate the i plus 1th days configuration right so starting from day 0 you can generate day 1 day 2 so until day n and generating from day i till day i plus 1 is going to take uh, 8 operations exactly because there are 8 present cells so it will be approximately 8 operations to do that so let's take its 8 into n or the number of present cells into n will be the asymptotic time complexity for this solution so let's code this solution first and then we'll see how we can optimize it further so here we are given with prison after n days and we would like to complete this method returning an integer a uh, vector integer right vector of integers mm -hmm. zeros and ones we are also given n the number of days so let's have a function that can basically take us from di to di plus one so generate next day right this could be a nice function and you can give the configuration of the ith day to this function it will return you what is the configuration at the i plus one th day so here's what we can do we can have okay we'll receive a vector of cells at the ith day now day and uh, using now day it will generate next day so let's have another vector next day the size of this vector will be 8 like the number of prison cells we just have to fill which of them will be empty and which of them will be like not empty so first of all we can obviously fill next day at 0 is going to be empty the 0th cell or the first cell is going to be empty because it has no left neighbor right and we want both left and right neighbors to be in the same state for the cell to become occupied right but since these cells the leftmost and the rightmost cells do not have two neighbors so they are going to become empty anyway so the rightmost cell will also become empty on the next day uh, and i don't really need to do this because when you declare a vector in c++ it's already filled with zeros so i don't need to write these two instructions and I can loop till the second last present cell that is going to be represented by 6 is going to be something like this the 0th cell 7th cell and these two are going to be empty anyway so I will think about the all the cells from cell number 1 till cell number 6 So if uh, the neighboring cells of the ith cell, I am thinking about the ith cell whether it should be occupied or vacant on the next day. So I will think about the left uh, neighboring cell of the ith cell on the previous day like the i minus 1th cell and the i plus 1th cell. So if these two are both either occupied or both empty then my cell is going to be occupied right that means if now day if the i minus 1 th and the i plus 1 th cells have the same state at now day then at next day the ith cell will become at next day the ith cell will become occupied otherwise we can do nothing because as i told you that uh, in this vector all elements are by default all integers are initialized to zero right so otherwise it's going to be empty so i can do nothing for that I don't really need to write an else in which I day say next day equal at i equal to 0 and at the end of this function I can simply return next day and that's it okay so this can generate the i plus 1th day using the ith day now we want to generate uh, the nth day right so given the 0th day I'll iteratively generate all the days so I can go something like this while n minus minus keep generating the next day or maybe a better thing would be so we will be iteratively generating the next days uh, vector so you 
you can have the ith day ith day here would mean first day second day then so on till the nth day so ith day becomes generate next day cells right and once i've generated the ith day next time when i want to update the ith day i will need the information of i minus one th day so i can store that also here right so next time this loop runs you can have the information in cells or a better thing could be instead of doing this what i can do is i could use the ith day again to generate i plus 1th day because once i am i have generated the ith day i don't really need the i minus 1th day anymore right so this thing would be good enough and initially i can initialize the ith day to the 0th day equal to cells finally i can return my answer as the ith day so this should run uh, except for the time complexity which is big o of n and i'll discuss why it will not run uh, or it will get a tle so we are getting the correct answer as you can see and now i'll try and submit this yeah so we got a time limit exceeded when the number of days was equal to 10 to the power 9 right although the code is quite concise but it's not efficient enough to pass the test cases why is that so because n is up to 10 to the power 9 and our solution runs in big o of n time so let's think what we can do to optimize this thing. So for optimizing this particular solution, we need to make two observations first and only then will we be able to optimize this. First of all, consider the thing that there are only eight present cells. So there are only 8 present cells. This is pretty small number compared to the total number of days n that is up to 10 to the power 9, right? The number of present cells is quite small. Now, apart from that, the configuration at the ith day is totally determined using the i minus 1th day. So let's say that I call one of the configuration of the eight cells to be C, uh, maybe C i configuration i. If ever throughout my simulation of the end days, if ever I reach a, a configuration C i that I had reached before. So assume that I start, I had seen a configuration C i and after a few number of days, I reach the configuration C i again. This would mean that, let's say this took me a total of x days, right? In x days, I started from configuration i and this configuration basically means what my present cells were looking like. So like something, you can say that 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. See, these are eight zeros. You can call this to be a configuration, maybe C0, right? So something like that. So CI is also one of the configuration in which some of these cells are zeros while others are one. So assume that you started from a configuration CI and after X days, you reach the configuration CI again. Now, since the next day entirely depends upon the previous day, this would mean that next uh, from the CI, all your positions are already predetermined, right? So this would mean that X, if you do if it took you x days to reach back to ci then this means again x days after you will be back at ci only because you will be stuck in this particular loop of configurations since all the configurations totally depend upon the previous configuration so imagine that your loop was something like this imagine that your loop was something like this from configuration ci1 you went to ci2 then maybe ci3 then after a few days you reached cix maybe right and after cix you reached back to ci1 
this would mean that from CI1 you are going to go to CI2 from CI2 you are obviously going to go to CI3 and so on till CIX and CI1 this means you are stuck in a loop and no matter how many days you simulate you are going to stay stuck in this loop forever so with these two observations let's make a few draw a few conclusions and try to optimize our solution first of all there are only eight prison cells so let's make a conclusion from this thing since there are just eight prison cells what are the total number of configurations possible let's uh, try to establish a upper bound on the total number of configurations that are possible so one of the configurations that is possible is 0 0 0 0 0 0, 0 1 right let me uh, sorry 0 uh, 8 zeros right let's call it c0 then another configuration that is possible is 7 zeros followed by 1 i'll call it c1 and you can notice this is nothing but uh, binary strings or binary 8 bit binary integers nothing else right and finally uh, let's say some middle configuration would be something like 0 0 and 4 zeros then a 1 then 3 zeros and I can call this configuration so this is 1 2 4 8 I can call this C8 you can write all the middle configurations but the thing is if you assume these to be binary integers you can number them like c0 c1 c2 c3 so on all the way up to a configuration in which there are eight ones and you can call that particular configuration c255 and this is nothing but these configurations i have converted them into decimal integers and i have named those configurations so you can easily verify mathematically that the upper bound on the number of configurations this is a tight and uh, this is not a tight upper bound you will find solutions in which the tight upper bound is way less okay but a loose upper bound on the number of uh, total number of possible configurations total possible configurations is less than equal to Two hundred fifty-six. These are the only possible configurations of the present cells, right? So this is one, uh, the first conclusion that at most two hundred fifty-six unique configurations of the cells exists, and among among these two fifty-six, one of them is going to be our answer, of course, right? This is nothing but two to the power eight. If there were maybe x present cells, then there will be two to the power x possible configurations. So for now we are having 2 to the power 8 possible configurations. So we have one conclusion less than equal to 2 to the power 8 configurations and I am saying repeating this again that a more tight upper bound is possible but we don't really need to go further. This is good enough for now that a maximum of 2 to the power 8 configurations exist. So from this let's think about the loop kind of thing right so what what's going to happen is that you're going to start from some configuration ci1 then you will go to some configuration ci2 ci3 so on right and at some point what's going to happen is that you will be stuck in a loop after some time so let's say you reach ci1 ci2 ci3 then after some steps let's say you reach the configuration cij now one of these configurations is bound to repeat within 256 days right why is that so because the total possible configurations itself are 256 so even if we have each of the conf uh, configuration at some day till the day number 256 once you have reached the 256th day either you have already repeated one of the states or you have uh, reached all the unique states at least at least once and at the next day you are going to repeat one of the previous configuration that is confirmed so within 256 days you are going to 
रिपीट अ कॉन्फ़िगरेशन राइट विद इन इन लेस देन इक्वल टू टू फिफ्टी सिक्स डेज वन रिपीटेड कॉन्फ़िगरेशन विल बी देयर दिस इज डेफिनेट एंड यू विल बी स्टक इन अ लूप गोइंग फ्रॉम सी आई जे टिल सी आई जे एंड दिस विल बी योर लूप यू कैन calculate the number of days it takes to get stuck in this loop okay and this is going to help you optimize your answer with this much uh, observations i recommend you to pause the video and think of the solution on, on your own now so guys this is exactly what we are going to do we are going to in a brute force manner start generating the configurations initially we are at ci1 we will generate ci2 and so on till cij and assume that cij is the first configuration that uh, we are going to uh, like the first configuration to repeat itself let assume cij is that one and once you see that a state a configuration has repeated itself you are done you can say that okay this is the start of my loop now no matter how many days i'm going to start from this uh, this ci1 going to reach this particular state and then i'm going to stuck be stuck in this particular loop then one of the configurations in this particular loop is going to be my answer then i could use some simple modulo arithmetic operations to determine that how many times will i travel this loop and once i cannot travel this loop any more completely the remaining number of days i can simply go in a brute force manners one by one and finally whichever configuration i reach after that many days that is going to be my answer so now i'll be showing you how to implement this thing and this will become very much more clear all right so we first of all we would like to find the start of the loop right so let's say that Also, instead of uh, having vectors, I could use these. Basically, I could represent the con entire configurations using only integers, right? I will describe how. So, I could assume these to be binary representations of my decimal integer, and for example, this particular day zero, I could represent this thing using a single integer, and this is nothing but. So this is nothing but two to the power zero plus one two three two to the power three plus two to the power four plus two to the power six. This is going to be my decimal in. Uh, uh, this is going to be my integer corresponding to this particular configuration. Same way for this configuration, my integer could be two to the power six plus two to the power five. Right. It's as easy as as that, and by this i will be able to assign a unique integer to each of the configurations let's assume this one this is going to be 2 to the power 1 2 plus 2 to the power 3 plus 2 to the power 5 and this is the idea here so with this thing let's first of all evaluate the starting of the loop so yeah here is what i can name my function this function will find me the starting configuration at which uh, basically the first repeated configuration so let's say integer repeated configuration the first configuration to repeat itself so first of all i would uh, uh, need to remember the configurations i've seen till now so what i can do is i could keep a set maybe a set of integers would work fine enough so let's just have a set here con uh, configurations seen i could keep an unordered set because then 
the average time complexity will be big of one for the lookup I could have even kept an array which is way better so let me just go with the array thing because it's the most efficient this is going to be the size of the array let me just have it uh, 2 to the power 9 all right boolean whether i have seen this configuration or not so a zero or a one right initially here i could set all these values to zero and that's okay so now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to convert the particular configuration to an integer so let's have integer convert configuration to int So here's what I can do. I could simply take uh, like the same thing as I, as we discussed. We are going to take the powers of those. We're going to treat the configuration as a binary in, uh, representation of a decimal integer and find the decimal integer. Right? That's it. So even though I discussed uh, like from right to left, it's easier for me if I represent these configurations from the left to right. So <clears throat> the thing that I am going to code up is in my code uh, code part my configurations are going to be numbered something like this this will be the least significant bit whereas this will be the most significant bit it will not make a difference because the configurations will still be unique that is what matters to me but the coding part will become a little easier So if this particular bit is on, if cells at i equals to 1, then I could add to the configuration 1 to the power i or 2 to the power i. So that's it. Uh, I now know a way how to convert my configuration to integers. Now till I find a configuration that has that is being repeated I'm gonna loop through till I find the repeated configuration or the start of the loop so one thing that I don't like about lead code is that you know, there's no suggestive text and you have to code everything again and again write every variable name but i guess that's fine so while config cells is not equal to one so while you haven't seen this configuration before So if you haven't seen this particular configuration before first of all let's mark it that I have seen it because now I have and the next time if I read this particular configuration I will say okay this is the repeated guy so that's cool and while config scene and now I will generate the next configuration I will go to the next day And once I've reached a configuration that uh, like I've reached the first configuration that is getting repeated or is repeating itself I could simply return that particular configuration so it will be best to return cells itself so this is the first configuration that repeats itself
So now we have the start of the loop. All we have to do is we have to advance till the start of the loop. And from there, we can use modulo operations to evaluate the total number of complete cycles we are going to go in that loop. And finally, the remainder number of days we can go using brute force. So I'll just code that part. start will be repeated configuration Sales. and at loop start is now is now stored the configuration that repeats itself for the first time now I will go in a brute force manner till the loop start so currently uh, day zero contains I will say it's the ith day and it is uh, basically the zeroth day so I will point uh, I will say that currently ith day stores the zero day so while I haven't reached the nth day I will keep advancing forward right hmm. moreover this is still the brute force but what I'm going to do is if I have reached the start of the loop, this is the correct point to stop this, uh, come out of this loop and think about how we're going to uh, apply the optimization, right? So, and we haven't, we haven't reached the start of the loop. So, and ith day is not equal to the loop start. So, if we have uh, re reached the loop start point, then it's best to come out. So if we reached the nth day, then my answer is already there. Otherwise, so now what has happened is that starting from this initial configuration, I have slowly advanced and I've reached this point that is the start of the loop here a few days have elapsed maybe some x number of days or uh, and then the number of days I still need to advance is exactly n minus x right so if I advance zero days then I still need to advance n days if I advance one day then n minus one days and so on so all these days will be advanced in this particular loop let's say that from this loop start you will reach the loop start once again after y days so what you can do is that you will see how many complete cycles are there that you can find using uh, let's call this n minus x as the remaining days so the remaining number of days are the days that you still need to advance assume how many complete cycles of this particular loop you are going to take and that is going to be remaining days modulo y so once you've completed a lot of cycles whatever is the remainder that would you that will be the uh, number of days that you still would like to advance so there are two things you need to do, you need to know x x will be given by to you by the current day and y y you will have to find out again using brute force you will start from some particular state or you will start from loop start and reach till loop start to find y the number of times you need to advance to do that and once that is done all you need to do is you need to say okay the remainder number of days and simply advance them using brute force and I, I will be coding the exact same thing I, I explained 
so we have integer remaining days and that is nothing but n minus square day so I have this remaining days and I'm going to find the y I told about so loop length maybe loop length 0 Okay, let's say loop length equals to one and I'll keep my temporary configuration one configuration ahead of the loop start. Now I'm gonna go in a brute force manner till my temporary configuration becomes equal to my loop start. and the loop length increases by one. So that's it now I have the loop length, I have the remaining days and what I'm gonna do is that the remainder days that I still need to move. After completing a lot of cycles, what are the still days that I still need to basically have the partial cycle, right? So partial cycle equals to remain days modulo your loop length and I'm gonna going to move these days using a brute force manner so while partial cycle minus minus this is the number of times I'm going to advance from the loop start and that is it finally you will return the answer day and that is going to be your answer so let me just check whether this works or not i don't think i will need this code ever again except for memset because that is used to initialize my configuration scene uh, array So let me just run this. All right, we're getting the correct answer for sample. I'll submit if it works or not. So we're getting a wrong answer at one of the inputs. I'll just check what's the problem here. So it says input is this and you need to check what happens after seven days. So this does look alright to me, partial cycle is the remaining days modulo the loop length, uh, let's just check this particular thing here. So imagine that my loop looks something like this and all right, something like this. So loop length equals to 3 and let's say that I wanted to advance a total of 10 days. So this would mean 10 mod 3 would be equal to 1 and it's like 1 day, 2 day, 3 day. 
one two three one two three so after nine days i'm going to stand here and i will need to go in a brute force manner one day ahead this looks all right unless i have touched the loop start i don't think i touched the loop start anywhere all right so here is one mistake uh, in this particular loop here while curd a less than n i've never incremented curd a let me just check this thing now so yeah uh, here is another silly mistake i wanted to go from loop start till loop start so this loop should run while i have not reached loop start once again isn't it so starting from loop start you go forward till you reach loop start once again so while this is not equal to this you keep going forward once it is equal to this i should come out of the loop so this was another silly mistake here and we can submit now and see all right so we're getting the accepted verdict and guys i hope this was helpful to you the i'll discuss the time complexity is also here that overall your loop is going to be at most 256 in length and it's going to turn out to be somewhat around 300 into 8 your overall number of operations that you do it will be much less to be honest for example that in reality it's not going to be uh, 256 unique states it's going to be less than or equal to 15 unique states but the recommendation from my side will be that when you are in an interview if you're if you're not sure about the mathematical proof why it will be less than or equal to 15 unique states i will tell you to stick with 256 states because you can easily prove that thing mathematically because once the interviewer uh, thinks that you are not able to prove it mathematically or you are not able to explain your intuition then it will be a negative sign for you and it will be even worse than just giving the brute force. The interviewer will think that you have already seen this problem and it will be somewhat like cheating, right? So what I would say is that stick with the uh, thing that you can prove mathematically. So as you can clearly see, you can prove that 256 configurations is can be easily proved mathematically moreover it runs uh, very well in the within the time limit right so i you can check out this code i will upload this somewhere and i'll add a link in the description so thanks for watching i'll see you tomorrow with the next video